<laughs> Welcome to the Cult Classic Horror Show. Every week, you can have the conversations you've always wanted to have about the films you love. Shut up! Get rid of your distractions and prepare yourself you got a big surprise coming to you. <laughs> You're not going anywhere. Welcome, welcome, everybody, to the Cult Classic Horror Show. Danny Bonin here with you guys, and and nobody else, nobody else. <laughs> Carmelo Chimera, the Carmelo Chimera uh, draft pick winner of 2023. That's right, the People's Champion. The yeah, People's Champ. Uh, this is a, I guess it's turned into a unique, special episode. Episode, dare I say, a, a gentleman's episode. Finally, I like it. Yes, Ref- we have our only most refined horror opinions. And yes, we have our whiskeys. Uh, I have chosen the Stranahan's Colorado uh, original whiskey. Yes, excellent mm. choice. I have Joseph Magnus bourbon, triple cast distilled, and the 2019 world's um, favorite bourbon. Ooh, lovely! And Carmelo is still awaiting a new microphone and. Uh, so I think he, he's coming in clear, but just if you notice a little bit of a difference, that's why, just so you yeah. guys know. Um, but no, Scotty is traveling and was supposed to make it and last minute said he couldn't. Uh, Rob is also traveling, and we sort of knew he maybe wasn't going to make it this whole time. Yeah, uh, he, said, he said this particular movie this week was too hardcore for him, that it scared yeah, he, him. Yeah. yeah, he couldn't handle it. He couldn't handle it. Couldn't handle it. Couldn't handle it. Uh, Unable to watch it. Yeah. Normally, in these situations, we would actually postpone, but we literally just postponed two weeks ago, uh, and we got a little bit of flack for that. And I just, I don't want an, I don't want an uproar of millions of people. So, right when you have as many millions of listeners as we do, it's dangerous <laughs> to disappoint your fans. Yes, we are. So to quell the uprising, come hell or high water, we're delivering some content tonight. That's right. No matter who shows up, I'll I'll sit here by myself and do a Huberman style podcast for you. <laughs> <laughs> but luckily, here we are. Here we are. Yeah. We and, talked about Danny and I just doing like butt stuff for you on camera. And yeah, I thought maybe that would like OnlyFans style, but uh, we just couldn't make the flight times work. Yeah, and we would also uh, come to fruition in thirty nine seconds, and it just wouldn't be <laughs> enough right. content. It would be too quick. Yeah, it wasn't long enough for anything. Not enough content. So, uh, Jeepers Creepers. Jeepers Creepers. Fear takes a road trip. Now, I'm I'm a little curious, Carmelo, because while deciding when to do this episode, because there were some times last week that would have worked for Rob, I was just sort of like, who ca- who is there anyone that's going to care if they miss it? And Carmelo was like, I, I... I <laughs> want to do great. Keepers Creepers. Yeah. And uh, so what is this? Does this movie have a special place in your heart or something? <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, I think this movie does. Uh, I, f- first of all, Christine would never let me hear the end of it. If I missed the Jeepers Creepers. <laughs> um, it's famously one of her favorite horror movies. I would, um, I did my homework. I watched it, you know, again, even though I've seen it many times. Sure. Prep myself for it. So I felt like, no, I was really excited to, to talk about it. Um, and I noticed a lot about the movie that I thought, you know, this would be fun to discuss. I, I, I first impressions, I love this movie. Is the, yeah. The, yeah. The it, so much of it works, and we'll get into that as we talk about the film. Um, and there's so much mystery. I love, like, what is this creature, you know, from, from whence does it come all of these things uh, are, are kind of capture the imagination. It's just the right amount of, of story, but it hints at the lore. So it's not, it's not so much lore that you get like bogged down in exposition mm-hmm. and, and it keeps me coming back. I love the cast. I, I love a lot about this movie. 
unfortunately it's it's got this this cloud hanging over it that we're going to talk about we will we but we won't make it about that i'd see a lot of comments saying well don't just talk about the fucking we won't, yeah we won't time. just you know but we have our hot takes here we're here to give it to you straight people. we are straight no chaser uh <laughs> so this is one of chris's favorite like horror movies from back in the day yeah yeah this is one of like like so much so that she even wants to watch the reboot version, which uh, we yes. have all heard is fucking awful. Yeah, I've, I've heard nothing but bad things about it. Yeah. Uh, and I don't <laughs> I remember the last time I know I've seen the immediate sequels, but I just cannot for the life of me recall any of them, honestly. So. I uh, I think it's I think we're going to have a short episode with so many fewer people. So I think we're going to have time. I think we can discuss the sequels briefly okay. and I'll, I'll recap them for you it will just be you telling me what happened because i uh totally forgot gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> it'll be me ranting about what happened. yeah just raving and ranting it just uh, absolutely <laughs> well this movie i mean my first impressions i i love this movie too it's it's got you know there's some things about it that uh aren't um, super amazing but just as a whole package deal i like it and it brings back some memories i remember watching this movie while i was gosh i must have been like sophomore year or junior year of must have been sophomore year of high school at a house party with my girlfriend at the time it's like one of those house parties where everything has sort of calmed down and people are passing out so it's probably 2 30 a.m you know right yep and it was my buddy's house, my buddy Rudy. He was roommates with this guy. And uh, so we just turned on a movie, and it was Jeepers Creepers. And mm-hmm. watched the movie. After the movie, I, like, banged my girlfriend in my buddy's room. And, yeah, you know. Sure. So, yeah. So it just has these memories. I think Scotty was there that night, but he, like, pat- he like fell in the ditch earlier and, and then just – I don't know if he drove home or someone drove him. I don't know what happened. That sounds like Scotty. Yeah. <laughs> it's just one of those nights and it was capped off by like Jeepers Creepers, you know. I, are those, aren't those like the best nights to yeah. do stuff for horror movie? Yeah, yeah, I think it takes was, me back. It's like Yeah. It, it was amazing. I think someone had ordered pizza. There's a ton of pizza. Uh Wonderful. you know, everyone was wasted. I actually didn't really drink at the time, so I I wasn't really wasted. I I was just fully taking in jeepers creepers you know like i was interested yeah and at like two in the morning you stumble on it it's got that air <laughs> of mystery what is this you know and it, yeah. it's not the same as just streaming a movie on demand as no. much as finding a movie it's it's you know. no that being said uh i watched this again last night and i was fighting the urge to fall asleep uh, like three-fourths of the way through so yeah it, it didn't but that could have been because i've seen it before and and whatever but it's still a great movie so uh let's jump in i guess i guess if you want to give us a synopsis we'll start there what's this movie what's this movie about i'm so glad you asked so <laughs> um in jeepers creepers siblings Derry and trish are are on their way home from college when a scary truck almost runs them off the road and they they realize that this truck is dumping what looks like bodies into some kind of a of a tube and you know being good samaritans as they are they they take a look to see that in fact not only is there a body down there there are many many bodies sewn together and mummified into a small church um freaking out they're desperately searching for help but unable to find it because they're in the middle of Podunk, USA, when they find themselves pursued by this killer, only to learn that the killer is no killer at all, but rather a creature that, uh, with the help of, of a psychic whose superpower is to exposit information about the film, uh, we learn that the creature eats its prey every 27 years. It comes out like the cicadas that are surrounding my house yes. right now. Oh, shit. oh no, Danny, you frozen. I have a captive audience. One moment. We got to insert that like technical difficulty. Yeah. So. Yeah. I, my, uh, uh, I think it was recording all the time, but my screen, my display keeps on just fucking me right in the ass. And I don't know why it's doing that. 
So maybe I'll just use the uh, um, laptop the whole time. Well, I like the laptop happen. camera because we can see the poster for Murder Yellowstone City. Which yeah, is- uh, and actually that, next to it is Zen Eater. If you can barely see it, nice. yep, there it is. All right, but anyways, um, so yes, uh, they realize this creature eats uh, eats its prey uh, when it when it comes out of hibernation every twenty seven years, and when it eats its prey, it sort of sort of takes that body part into itself and that's how it keeps it alive like immortal because it's constantly replacing its body parts with its victims and in the end um they're unable to stop this this invincible creature it lays waste to a police station between between it and and dairy and trish and it, it takes dairy away and uh takes his eyeballs very true very true it might go funky again for a second here but let's let's see i'm trying to fix this uh all right. All right. So, um, geez, spotlight. Whoa. Sorry. Like. Sorry, guys. If you're watching online, you can see that uh, my camera had some issues and then I'm just, you know, had to fix it here. So we should know. just over this whole segment, put one of those old timey technical yeah. difficulties. <laughs> technical <laughs> difficulties. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, anyways, I'll swap the camera out too. But um, yeah, so. Well, numbers. How about some numbers here? Uh, so, yeah, this actually was was a, su- a success. Um, the budget was ten million, is what I see. And um, let me just sorry, I'm changing the uh, display camera. There we go. And uh, grossed fifty nine point four million worldwide. Um, I'll get into some more numbers on when we get down to reception, but. Basically, yeah, it had a huge opening. It was number one for Labor Day weekend, and it was the highest grossing Labor Day weekend opening at the time. It, it beat out the, the Crow City of Angels um, that, that held that before. Now, I don't know. That's the stat I saw. I don't know if that is only pertaining to the genre because that sounds like, you know, a, a different movie should have held that spot like rain man or something you know what i mean um, right right but maybe yeah. labor day weekend is not a a popular weekend to open movies i don't know not a, not a big weekend opener yeah and beating up crow city of angels is an awful lot like when those two handicapped kids on south park fought it's yeah exactly yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. it's i that that's the visual we need yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not it's not awesome it's not great but uh, no, let's jump into it. Let's jump into it. So yeah, yeah, let's talk about it. Filming locations. This movie was filmed in various locations in Central Florida, including Ocala, Wildwood, and Dunalyn, to name a few. You know, I think uh, that makes a lot of sense. I can see this taking place in Florida. Yeah, and and Ocala is is like eighty miles north of Orlando. Now, I wouldn't picture by the looks of it. I would think it was Midwest, you know, in the country, um, but. Salva called the the like he 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 picked that location because it, it had the look of the Midwest, um, and but it also had these grueling temperatures. So I don't know, maybe it was a tax credit thing or something like that. Why he ultimately chose Florida? Um, See, it doesn't make any sense to me because Florida doesn't have a film tax credit to my yeah. house. They don't have a state income tax. Yeah, that's true. So I and who knows what it was like in in two thousand one or two thousand when they filmed this, but still, right. yeah, yeah, it's kind of interesting. I don't know. Well, he he called the filming process grueling because they had to work during the summer and there were heat waves, high temperatures. Obviously, Central Florida in the middle of the summer is just it's not going to be a good time. No. And if Rob were here, I'm sure he would tell us that uh, yes. Florida is not a good time at any time of year. But <laughs> uh, no, no. Although he keeps telling us all to move there. So uh, I, but he's I, not I, he's, he's well, not selling it. No, he's not selling it. And when we went there, we got eaten alive by mosquitoes. We wouldn't last a week. Eaten alive, I dare say. Good Lord. I still have scars from those mosquito bites. Dude, so did I tell you last? So Carmelo and I went fishing with Rob down in uh, uh, outside of Bradenton, Anna Maria. And holy fuck, like we each got at least 278 mosquito bites or gnats, the no And Scotty and Rob same situation same deal had like two two each yeah. or something oh yeah no big deal neither of them yeah i don't know what happened i don't know what so anyways i i think i told you this i went back you know the next year this was must have been last year or something and 
went fishing again with Rob in the same sort of area. Right. And this time I was like, nope, I wore like uh, boat shoes with long socks, with like th- pants, canvas pants, with uh, one of those airy fishing shirt long sleeves, you know, to cover me up that Rob got me, with a neck gaiter uh, covering my neck and a hat. Oh my and God. And sometimes I had it over my face. And still, I probably had about 22 bites after oh. fishing. Like, oh. still. Poor. So Poor. It, was, it was like, it was, um, what do I want to say? Bearable? Like, 22 bites compared to 222 bites isn't as bad. <laughs> but it was still like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you'd think with all that, you know, mummified wrapping around you, you would have been able to protect yeah, yourself. Yeah, like. It was, no, it, it was, it's just terrible. I've never seen mosquitoes that aggressive. It's horrible. Yeah. Nuts. You know, I've so, scratched up my ankles and my calves. And oh, my God. Head. I went to Disney directly afterwards, and the like the ones on my Achilles, like where the shoe and sock were just oh, rubbing. Oh, God. Off. And it rubbed and kept the itching going. Oh, man. Anyways. Yeah. And those- then Lizard Cannon had one of those, like, bite sucker things that's supposed to make them oh yeah i remember that yeah i yeah. remember just passing it back and forth until it was dripping <laughs> blood and i don't even think it did anything <laughs> i mean i would just take the, the placebo effect at that point to exactly it. exactly my God. leg is starting to itch talking about this. i know <laughs> yeah i just i just there might be an happen. idea for a horror movie here although we've probably seen that before itchy pussy you know yeah. growths oh. I don't know. no i think the problem i have is like I I'm terrified of certain kinds of bugs. And so like, if you wanted to make like a genuine horror movie, I can't think of a better way to do it than about something you actually are afraid of, mm. but I mm-hmm. couldn't like, I couldn't tolerate the shooting. Y- yeah. I, well, I don't know. It had to all be CG, you know? Yeah, so. yeah, exactly. And I would not be involved in the CG process. Uh, Definitely can do all the bugs. Well, Victor Salva, speaking of, he is the writer and director it, we will touch on him here. So uh, Victor Salva is known for films such as Powder, Rites of Passage, Peaceful Warriors, Dark Horse, and the Jeepers Creepers franchise. Uh, he also, and, but not the newest one, he did the three Jeepers Creepers. Um, he also wrote and directed the second and third installments of, of the franchise, like I said. so. Nice. Um, but as we sort of hinted at, his reputation and legacy is tarnished by this controversy surrounding um, a child molestation uh, conviction and which when he was 30 years old, well, well before most all of these movies that he did, uh, which actually I didn't know that. It was surprising to me. So it was in 1988 when this sort of went down. Uh, and I thought that because I remember when the third Jeepers Creepers came out and it was right. this big old hoopla. It was like, oh, don't support this child molester and all this stuff. And right. I thought that I knew that the incident happened long ago, but I thought they had just unearthed it, but that's not the case at all. So yeah, it, it, yeah, it, it, it like happened and the repercussions happened and, and people were just still bringing it up as like the third movie came out. So that's, I, I'm assuming yeah. that obviously it's resurfaces every time he goes to release a film, you know? Yeah. That's cause that's what I was, I was confused about until we did our research for this is I thought something new had happened or like someone had come forward but it's it's really just any time he makes a movie, even going back to Powder in '95 mm-hmm. for Disney. Uh, yeah, it looks like people were like picketing and passing out leaflets when when that. Yeah, came out. well, uh, I think he, one. Well, sorry, I was going to say I think one of the main drivers for the hoopla around Jeepers Creepers three, and I have it in the notes here is that there was a plot point in that film of a v- child victim of molestation and. I yeah. think he ended up like, I don't know, either justifying it or getting rid of it or something. There's definitely a, a line. I remember reading that there's a line in that movie that's something like you can't, you don't choose who you love or something like that. Mm. And that was taken very much as like a justification of sexual abuse. And so people are like, oh, now he's also using it for him to like defend what <laughs> yeah, he did. Well, that's true. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and that, but, and then what's interesting is that's what killed it. You know, we got Jeepers Creepers two and three mm-hmm. before someone put a stop to this and and rebooted it. Um, yeah. And when we talk about the sequels later, we'll see that at least for like fans of this series, that's uh, unfortunate because three sets up a fourth movie. That's all. Yeah. Does it? Okay. I'll yeah. to, I know. I now I'm interested. I want to rewatch. So we'll we'll talk about them. But yeah, yeah, we'll we'll get there a little bit later. 
But yeah, so in 1988, he was Victor Salvo's fielding offers to make high profile studio films uh, when he was charged with having oral sex with 12 year old Nathan Forrest Winters while directing Nathan in the movie Clown House. Mm. Yeah, mm. so after uh, he confessed to the crime, and Salva, at the age of 30, was sentenced to three years in prison, and he served 15 months before his release in 1989. So he pleaded guilty to lewd and, uh, you know, what is that, las- la- lascivious? L- <laughs> l- lascivious? Lascivious? Lascivious conduct? You know, yeah, you're the lawyer. I know, I'm not <laughs> familiar with this charge. Uh, uh, lascivious. Yes, and having sex with a or having oral sex with a person under fourteen, and and procuring a child for uh, pornography. Although he I don't know, if only he, sentenced to three fucking years. That's man. what I thought. I was like, what the fuck? I mean, yeah. nineteen eighty eight, but the eighties uh, were all the time. I guess. I mean, he fucking he uh, pled guilty to it, which I realize they did in exchange for a more lenient sentence. But I just feel like child pornography and. Yeah. and I mean, oral sex with a 12-year-old? I, I just sort of feel like that's a double digits. Cut. Who is on the giving and the receiving end, I, I wonder here? I also wonder <laughs> that. And realize it would be weird maybe, the, maybe the 12-year-old was like, you know what? It's unfortunate, oh, no, no, we're not doing that. but that was the best head I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> well, Judd, Judd was there, you know, teaching us uh, how to do this, I guess. Yes, yes. This is just... Touching on that would have been so much worse if Rob was here. You know that. I know Rob would have made it. He would have touched on a lot, a lot more. Yes, that. yes. Yeah, that's a nice way to put it. Uh, uh, since we're since we're making fun of of this, uh, I should I should quote Winters here. He told the Associated Press that Salvo's return to filmmaking just makes me sick. I'm not going to stand by. He should not be allowed to live his life as if nothing happened. And uh, mm-hmm. I mean, three years, he only served 15 months. He didn't even do half his term. That's, that's just crazy. That's yeah. crazy. Wow. Yeah. And obviously the, uh, the, the kid like wasn't okay with it because like, as you mentioned before, f- for, you know, when Victor Salva did powder uh, in 1995 for Walt Disney, um, his Nathan was outside the studio picketing and handing out leaflets about uh, just saying negative things about, you know, don't support this film. You're supporting a child molester basically. Yeah. Um, Yeah. And I mean that, you know, for context, that's six years after the conviction, seven years after the crime. So we're talking about a 19 year old. So this mm -hmm. is somebody who was tremendously damaged by what happened and, Mm -hmm. and also like bold enough and brave enough to, stand up out loud and talk about this, you know? Um, so this isn't, I, I don't know what, how to put this, but there are some of these cases where you hear about people who, Oh, you know, it was a minor, but it was, it was his 17 year old girlfriend. He was 18 and then they got married and, yeah, you know, yeah. this poor guy's 50 years old and was convicted for sexually abusing the woman that he then spent the rest of his life. Right, yeah. Yeah. This isn't one of those cases where there's something on the line or something where the law gets it wrong. And we're talking about a straight up oral sex with a 12 year old who was not consenting. And then, you know, not very long after actively picketing this guy. So, yeah. Yeah. So that, yeah, pretty cut and dry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's really not a lot of, like I always wondered, like, what's the story here? And then we did. Yeah. This. But surely there's more to this story. Well, I think that it, it probably did ruin some things because, because people saw him as a, as a good, a really good filmmaker. I mean, the Orlando Sentinels, Roger Moore wrote that Salva was perhaps too talented for an exploitative horror movie. But this is all that Hollywood would let convicted child molesters do. And not only that, he this movie is executive produced by Francis Ford Coppola. Um, yeah, yeah. I noticed that on this viewing. I didn't know that before. That's crazy. Yeah, surprisingly. So it makes it just I don't know if there's any kind of connection there, but it just makes me think that he probably had avenues to make films like Coppola and, and award winning material and, and whatever, you know. So I, I think that's probably right. And it sounds like he was, you know, like you said, fielding major offers from studios mm-hmm. before. Mm-hmm. Um, but Salva's words on this are interesting. And I know we promised we weren't going to just talk. And we're not going to just. Talk no, about no, we'll, we'll move on in a minute. But. Yeah, I, I, I love to talk about like how the creature works and what makes this movie scary. But mm-hmm. uh, but we'll we'll get this out of the way. So Salva has some interesting words to share about this. And, and I think it's fascinating. He said, I pled guilty to a terrible crime and I spent the rest of my life trying to make up for it. 
For almost 20 years, I've been involved with helping others. I've been in therapy and I've made movies. But I paid my debt to society and apologized to the young man. And all I can hope is that people will give me a chance to redeem myself. Now, what I think is interesting about this is because he's he's struck on something really interesting. When you ostracize perpetrators of a crime, they're more likely to commit more crimes, Hmm. right? The Mm -hmm. thing that stops most of us from murdering and arson and all the other crimes that are out there is the fact that you have family and friends, like you have a lot to lose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you don't, right, the, the recidivism rate just goes up. That's just statistically true. And while it sounds like we both agree his sentence on this was totally out of line with what we would have thought. Yeah. Um, there is also something to be said for like, yeah, you get sentenced to a crime and then you go to jail and you do the crime, you do the time. But then afterward, theoretically, and I'm not saying this with child molesters, but in general, you, you, know, you go to jail and then you want to be able to like get out and get a job and, ha- and live your life. Yeah. And theoretically you should because our system has no double jeopardy. You, you don't, mm-hmm. you don't just suffer forever. You do X years and then you are done. Sure. Sure. So, you know, he's making an interesting point here, which is this man is, I mean, we've seen it. His career has been obliterated. Yeah. No. You know, and every, like you said, every time he makes a movie, it comes up again. Um, and I'm not saying what he did was defensible by any stretch, but he makes a point that like he was sentenced to jail. He served jail as was the sentence. And now he's still going to be punished for the rest of his life. Yeah. So, you know, I, don't, I don't, I don't know what conclusion I'm drawing other than I think that's interesting. Yeah, I know it is. It's, and that's a sort of, of the things that's a hard thing to forget. I almost think he could have murdered a dude and oh, yeah, people absolutely. would <laughs> have forgotten about it by now. <laughs> a- absolutely. There, there are all kinds of justifications for, for murder that we would have been okay with or would have, I mean, look at, and again, not defending this, but to your point, yeah. Matthew Roderick famously killed somebody in a drunk driving accident. Oh yeah. Yeah. And- mm did not serve time to my knowledge correct audience correct me if i'm wrong no we don't sit here uh, just boycotting matthew broderick forever there's now there's some people who do there's yeah. some people who won't forget this sure but but it's not like this i mean salva yeah. cannot make a movie without it being picketed because of this you know but of course he did make his most successful movies which which would be the jeepers creepers franchise uh after the fact so i guess we can't he can't complain too much but Right. But yes, maybe it has barred him from from being the next freaking Scorsese. I don't know. Maybe not. Uh, Yeah, I mean, conceivably, because he does this clown house movie, which looks like a kind of a horror movie. I'm not familiar with it. Me neither. In 88. And then in 12 years later, he's still doing horror movies. And Mm -hmm. and Jeepers Creepers being so well received is probably a testament to his skill as a filmmaker. Yeah. Uh, You know, because it's it's a $10 million horror movie. It could have been garbage. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Could have. Well, let's talk about the film. We got, uh, we we'll get into production here. So, um, yeah. So according to Justin Long, he and Gina, so Justin Long obviously played, um, Derry, uh, Gina, let me look at the last, uh, Gina Phillips played Trish Jenner. Um, and then th- this is actually, I looked her up. This is what she's mainly known for. She's done a ton of other stuff, but just nothing else that, really stood out at me you know yeah she looked familiar to me like she had mm-hmm. this face where i'm like i've seen this woman before but yeah. then i i have not i have not seen her in any other no time. exactly I, I i thought the same thing i was like hmm what, what else has she done and then i started looking and i'm like well she's done a ton i just i don't really know any of it so yeah. and uh, some of it makes me some of that i'm thinking is like she's she's very very attractive but also in like a very normal kind of way Mm -hmm. you know like i would agree you see what i mean yeah and and in that sense i think she looks familiar because i'm like oh like i know like a dozen girls that look like yeah and obviously watching rewatching this justin long just looks so young to me in this movie Um, yeah he does he looks like a baby he he really does and he i think he looks a bit younger than her but i i always have that that uh syndrome where it's like i see a a girl at a certain age and i'm like okay that makes sense and then i see a guy at that age and i'm like oh he looks he looks like he's like four years younger you know what I mean? right right <laughs> some yeah. with guys just the this boys seem to be younger than they actually are for some reason i don't know 
That yeah. sounds like a creeper thing to say, but <laughs> no, but I, I get it. Like how often do you see like, you know, mid twenties playing teenagers yeah. on the CW, which, you know, for all kinds of good reasons. I mean, you can't cast a teenager who's constantly like changing hormones, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. uh, but then like the girls in there are, are much younger and Hollywood is very unfair to women. Once they get over like 30, 35, they're like, True enough. you're basically elderly. There's, you, you know, there's, there's parts for like Judy Dench and there's parts for 21 year old Gina Louise Phillips, but there's really nothing in between. Yeah, not a whole lot. Yeah. You were used to seeing uh, James Bond or Daniel Craig at 54 uh, uh, opposite a 31 year old, you know? Right. So that's, exactly. that, that's why we've been trained that way. So yeah. uh, we have Jonathan Breck as the creeper. Mm-hmm. Um, so according to Justin Long and, and Gina, he tried, they tried to avoid interacting with Breck throughout the entire shoot to avoid connecting with the actor, which benefited their performances by making them, actually look scared when they were in character which i think is fine you hear about this happening where oh, if yeah. the characters don't get along maybe you don't really fraternize with with them on set you know? yeah yeah um but the, the creeper was designed by storyboard artist brad parker uh its costume was created by brian panicas panicas if i'm saying that right uh from makeup and monsters is the company uh, but then its wings were created by Charles Garcia and digitally rendered by Buddy Gein, Scott Ramsey, and Bob Morgan Roth. That's a That's great powerful. fucking name. That is a great name. Um, so, so, so you mentioned the wings, just wanted to say, this was yeah. something we noticed on this viewing, is there's not a ton of CGI in this movie. Not a ton, no. Except for the wings. And I think what makes it hold up, like I even went, I rewound and watched again when the creature carries Derry off at the end. And the CGI looks great like it holds up just fine mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and i think it's because they stayed in their lane they only did it for like the wings or the things they could not do physically mm-hmm. they mix it with mostly practical effects when they do the cgi it's dark and he's like behind a tree and he's far away and so they stayed in their lane they didn't say like well, let's have this yeah. big spectacle it, it's small and so even though frankly for when this movie came out cgi was not great at the time no no it wasn't it so yeah they didn't make a big noticeable show of it and you're right the only cgi parts in the movie are the the wings themselves and then when he when he flies away with dairy uh, yeah. over over the moon so yeah exactly. in front of the moon and it, and it works, it works yeah great. yeah well so they shot for two months in florida a uh, month and a half of that was at night, so they'd start at five in the afternoon and and would just stop when the sun came up, which is pretty brutal. But at least it, it allowed it to be cooler temperatures because they're at night. Nice. Um, I this was a fun little thing I found that we'll we'll see at the end here it was not confirmed by Salva, but many film news sources believe the film was loosely inspired by the case of Dennis Depew. In Coldwater, Michigan, in 1990, brother and sister Ray and Marie Thornton witnessed Depew, who had already caught their attention after quickly driving past them moments prior, disposing of a blood-soaked blanket behind an abandoned schoolhouse. So Depew then tailgated them for two miles, and after he drove off, the siblings returned to the schoolhouse to investigate, finding the blanket and reporting their findings to the police. The murder case and subsequent manhunt of Depew were featured on an episode of Unsolved Mysteries uh, on March 20th, 1991, which my mom probably watched because she loved that show. And who didn't? It's an awesome show. I need to go back oh, and watch it. You know? yeah. Uh, but yeah, then the following day, Depew committed suicide during a shootout with police in Mississippi. Um, the episode's reenactment of the events and details contained throughout, uh, such as the license plate game that, that uh, the Thorntons said they played, were obviously similar to the opening scenes of this film. So mm. it, a lot of people have seen that and pointed it out, but Victor Salva never confirmed that he wrote the script based off that. Um, he did say, however, that the beginning was based on a true story that he was told, only it was an elderly couple, and they went back to this pipe to see what he was throwing down there. Um, you know, Victor Salva thought it was a tremendously brave thing for them to do, but also remembered when he heard it thinking, it, you know, if that was a movie, if they went back, he would be on the edge of his seat. So, I, I don't, yeah, I, I don't know anything else about these this elderly people's story, but I don't know. Yeah. But, uh, Why is this an episode of Unsolved Mysteries? It sounds very solved. Yeah, I mean, he committed suicide and what? Uh, maybe there were the the bodies were unsolved. I don't know. I have to watch Ooh. it. 
M- maybe. maybe it will. Yeah, I, I don't know. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah, fans, if you know what happened here, let let us know. We're we're curious. Yeah, yeah that does sound interesting. So, um, so yeah, so after a summer of watching Blair Witch and Sixth Sense, Salva wrote his own monster movie. By the Jeeper- way. I- I know we weren't going to talk about this again, but I <laughs> I looked up Victor Salva. And oh, I you did? Oh, oh I, I saw some pictures of him. Yeah. He super looks like a pedophile. He does look like a creeper. Yeah. yeah he he looks like does, definitely does. Oh, well done. I like the pun there. That was good. All right. <laughs> oh, sorry. Back to the movie. Back to the movie. <laughs> yes. Uh, but anyways, that's how Jeepers Creepers came about. Um, he grew up watching old classic Universal movies. Uh, you know, Creatures in the Black Lagoon and Dracula, and he based more, uh, those movies based more on suspense and shadows. So he wanted to predicate Jeepers Creepers on images that would be hard to forget. He liked devoting his time to just, just a few characters and getting this monster right. Mm. Um, and and that's part, part of what I, I do like about this movie. We'll talk about some of that imagery in a second, I think, here. Mm-hmm. But anyway, so in the opening, we got the heat coming off the road. Uh, I mean, that was a real reminder that they dealt with an average temperature of close to a hundred degrees every day while shooting. Oh, it's just God. nuts. And the humidity had to be, it's there, you know, it's humid there too. That's just unbearable. Um, yeah. It's just pretty rough, but, uh, but yeah, he liked the location. He liked the rural, rural heartland for the script. Um, horse yeah. country is central Florida, a lot of open space. And he was actually surprised how well it fit. Mm. Um, mm. But uh, one of the things Salva's most proud of, and rightfully so, is the the actors in the film. He said he he cast smart actors and was proud of that. And I thought they did an awesome job. Um, yeah, the character of Trish is is guarded, tough, uh, preoccupied, and pensive. You know, Gina wrote herself over like a hundred questions she had to answer in character, and wrote a ton of notes about her character traits. Um, so she just felt confident in, in what she would do in the moment while preparing for this. Uh, it, this is funny. It's like it says Justin Long always wanted to be in a horror movie and found the experience really cool. And now it seems like he's been in almost nothing but horror movies. Right, right. Barbarian, for example, and yeah. Goosebumps he was in recently. And- yeah, and uh, what's the the uh, uh, fucking one where he's like a walrus? Uh, oh yeah, Tusk. <laughs> tusk. Yeah, yeah, Tusk. Yeah, Barbarian. You mentioned I watched uh, one. I mentioned on um, what did you watch a while back where. God, what was it called? Like House of Darkness or something? I actually think Salva might have done it uh, recent recently. It was uh, a, a one location, like three actor movie where he's just having a conversation with these two sisters all night, and then they end up being vampires and they kill him. <laughs> oh, I think I didn't that come out like right around the same time as uh, Barbarian as well. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was. It wasn't too long ago. So a yeah. little bit. I mean, the acting's great, but it's definitely not a lot happens. But there's some cool dialogue, you know. Yeah, uh, he definitely does a great job. So, um, but yeah, the, when uh, they, they were reading a few different actors with uh, Gina, and when Justin read, they just quickly developed this brother sister relationship, and it was just uh, it, it was a match. So that's one thing I really love about this movie is I love that they're brother and sister and not a couple because mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. dynamic is different. Like you just don't see that dynamic in a lot of horror movies. That makes this. It is the part makes it interesting to watch. It's very different. I wouldn't have minded seeing someone get down with that actress, though. Oh yeah, no, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. I was like, we're not going to see that because they're brother or sister. But right, oh well, right. oh well, you know, no biggie, no biggie, no biggie. <laughs> we'll get it in the, in the sequel. She's like fifty years old now, by the way. She's how what? She's like over fifty now. Really? Yeah. Well, that doesn't really surprise me. How? I wonder how old Justin Long is. He's probably similar. That's I'm good. guessing. Uh, looks um, like he was born in '78. Oh, so he's, I think he's eight. I think she was like 70 or something when I looked her up. Yeah, so he's like 47. So, okay. That makes sense. Something like that. 46. Um, Yeah. Well, so the heart of the movie is the relationship between the brother and sister. According to Salva, this is what separates Jeepers Creepers from your average creature feature or horror film. Um, He used the song Jeepers Creepers. It was, you know, a popular song and jazz standard back in the day. Um, it was actually originally from a 1938 movie called Going Places, um, but premiered by Louis Armstrong and, you know, has been covered hundreds of times since then. Yeah. The movie um, even has two versions of it in there, in there, doesn't it? That's true. Yeah. There's one like modern, almost uh, electronic version of it. Yeah. On the radio. And then the old fashioned version, of course, too. Um, right. 
Salva says that Derry was sort of a lot like him, I guess, that, that, as, as a younger man. And oh. Trish, yeah, Trish was based oh. on his older sister. So loosely based on, on characters on him and his older sister. Um, but he felt he didn't write Trish to her full potential. Uh, and that Gina came in and really helped bring life to the character more more than what was on the page. Um, and, you know, with her preparedness and everything. So she became more active and more assertive once she uh, got inside the role. Uh, and Salvo said he was, it was, he was very collaborative with the actors and wanted, wanted whatever was best for the movie and the characters. He was open to changing, being flexible when things came up during filming process. Um, just a real collaborative effort, I guess, between the actors and him. Um, so, yeah, well, designer and illustrator, we talked about how Brad Parker, storyboard artist and designer, sort of uh, came up with the, the look of the, the creeper. Um, but he also designed the infamous demonic looking truck, which has horns and is like a medi- medieval helmet. Uh, yeah. Brad, what, yeah. He says he was inspired by an old van that, that drove by him one day while he was working. And he just thought to himself that that looked like the creepers truck and that inspired him to make the uh, initial drawing of the vehicle. And th- then the truck was built. <laughs> so, uh, but they, they built three creeper vans. Uh, two trucks actually ran and were used during like the chase scenes. And so let's talk about this truck because this bothers everybody who watches this movie. Yeah, <laughs> he registered a license plate. Like he got a vanity plate for his car. Uh, what I wonder, because I thought a little bit of that too. It he has the the beating you on it, but that's really it. There, I don't see any state or tag stickers or or anything. Yeah. It 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 almost made me because I thought for a moment. Then it made me think, did he just like make this thing himself, or did Maybe. he? But but you're right. Did he register that? Like what? <laughs> yeah, and and so <clears throat> my thought was that. The car, which looks fairly old. My thought was that the car was a lot like himself, where the car was made of pieces of other cars that he mm, okay. over the years, um, which is is fine. He, But that means that he got that license plate from somebody else. And that means yeah. that so – I mean, so maybe the idea is it was beating you, but then, you know, he gets it, and now it takes on this meaning of beating you. Yeah. Yeah, I'd be eating. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I guess. But uh, yeah, so that kind of bothered me about the car, though. It's true. It it could be a little hole there, you know. Also, he can <laughs> fly. So, like, what does he need the fucking truck for? Yeah, yeah. I guess to carry his bodies more easily. He's getting old, you know. He's he's got a he's got to mind his back. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> and he does. He does look like he needs a new spine when he's pulling those bodies out and throwing them into the. That's true. That's true. You know, all he's got to do is eat one, though, find it. Uh, well, the line where Trish says she always thought this would be the road she died on was meant to be a red herring. And, uh, you know, so, so many horror films kill their female characters and Salva wanted to throw off the audience, make them think that that, that was foreshadowing something. But actually, she lives. Uh, yeah. yeah, I get it. Um, and fun little fact, the scene of Derry peeing in the field is really Justin Long just peeing for the camera in the field, <laughs> you know, which, which is how it should be. You know, you hear these stories where it's like, oh, well, you know, they gave him like a, a bladder so that they could uh, push water out of it. Right. It's like, just turn your back to the camera and go piss in that field over there. Yeah, whip it out and fucking drain the snake. <laughs> Yeah, you know, hopefully it doesn't take more than one take uh, or or two if you have to water up and wait a minute. <laughs> but as long as you don't uh, shake it too many times on camera, yeah. my pornography. Yeah, exactly. You know, if you shake it more than twice and you're playing with it, right? right so, exactly. <laughs> uh, the music in the chase scene was written for the film shot by shot. So that's something I was really proud of. He's real proud of the score. I, I do recall it a little bit, but it'd be interesting to watch it again, just keeping that in mind. Um, they they did a lot of these chase scenes just like Hollywood does. The car was lifted on a rolling platform called a, a process trailer, which is lowered or towed, sorry, by the uh, the quote unquote insert car. The insert car is like a large truck where the director, script supervisor, camera crew, DP, they, they all are in that. Um, and then they have a guy that drives that, keeps everyone safe. He's called the insert car driver. This guy was Jack Carpenter. That was his name. He sounds cool. Yeah, he does. Yeah, he does. So about these chase scenes, because this is one of those things about this movie where I'm like, this is excellent. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I like the movie's not on first viewing, does not reveal that it's a creature, not till way into the movie. Yep. And, you know, we know that going in now, but I think it's brilliant that it could have just been a serial killer and it would have just been just as scary. Um, That's true. The thing about the truck that I love is that the, you get these shots inside the car where it's a two shot of the brother and sister talking, but in the rear window of the car, you see the creeper gaining on yeah. you. And that is some nail biting shit, right? It is. That is very cool. I actually really liked that, uh, the use of the camera there. And it, it, it sort of hints to it uh, that uh, when she's waiting out by the road and then you see the headlights coming up in the background and they're yeah. sort of blurry, mm. it turns out it's not the creeper truck. It's like a similar looking truck that drives by. Mm. But it was still, I, I still like that it had an eeriness to it. You know, yeah. like we were seeing something they couldn't see, obviously. Yeah, it, it super, it super does. And, you know, if you've ever been on the road and looked in your rear view window, or rear view mirror out yeah. the window to see yeah. some, if someone's gaining on you, and they are, that's very nerve wracking when you yeah. look down and then you look back up and it's there. Yeah. And, and we, that's what they experience. We get to see though, this thing coming. And I mean, it's like watching the woman swimming in jaws and the shark is coming for her. You're like, get out, get out of the water. Yeah. And it's already too late. That's what it felt like to me. Yeah, no, it did. It does. It really does. Um, well, the most criticism Salva takes in the film is the characters going back to the church. And, and I did think of this while watching. It's like, why, why are they going back? But he asked himself, you know, what question could, right. could they pose that would, that would get them to go back. And he ultimately falls on empathy. It's like, if that was you, would you want someone to come, to come rescue you? Um, so, you know, the line where Trish says, this is the part where the character in a horror movie does something stupid. That was put in there by Salva because he, he knew what the audience would be thinking. Um, he, he wanted to let him know that, yes, these kids are aware of, of Freddy and the scream movies, but, but never felt as if they, it could happen to them in real life. You know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so it's almost acknowledging like, yeah, it's a stupid decision, but, you know, what can you do? <laughs> yeah. And, you know, it's interesting because um, the compassion angle is an interesting one. Like dairy appeals to what if that were you in there? And, and what if we find out later we could have saved somebody, but we we waited too long. <clears throat> yeah. And I, and I get it. And and just and, and I I don't think it plays as totally stupid. I mean, I think. Remember that he's just trying to look down the tube and then he gets dropped down there. So he's not trying to like go investigate this tube. Um, yeah. But, you know, for me, I'm like, look, let's say someone is down there, man, and they need attention. You know, aren't you hurting them by just going to get the cops slower than otherwise? Like, That's true. What would you do? Would you go back? No, absolutely not. I would absolutely call for help, but I would not solo go back. I mean, like best case scenario, it's a serial killer. What were they going to do then? Yeah, you know, Jeepers Creepers could have been a serial killer movie. It just isn't. What did they? Why not? What would it cost? Them? What if it was me and you driving? We had a couple drinks. We were a little tipsy. Ah, uh, uh, <laughs> no, that's different. Then, obviously, we can defeat any physical challenge with ease. Oh, of course, of course, so, you know. And the whiskey I mean, just improves your coordination. Yeah, yeah, of course it does, and yeah. your and your decision making abilities. Right, which is why <laughs> we would make the right decision and go look. Yeah. <laughs> well, the long pipe scene cuts back and forth between uh, studio and location. Assuming you know studio oh. is down below, location would be the pipe sticking out of the ground. So that's interesting. Uh, uh, and Salva really considers this film like a dark piece of art, not just a horror movie. He takes great pride in the film's emphasis on on trauma and the way the actress portrayed fear and trauma. I will say though, uh, adding a note to that, the, the amount of trauma that Justin Long's character was dealing with after just simply being, I guess in a room with bodies on the ceiling, I guess, but come on, like he can't even say one word to his sister. They drive all the way to this diner and he, he still can't like physically, communicate with anybody you know what i mean yeah yeah he's in like such shock you know which like i get it i mean he's basically in the middle of like a like that fucking the capuchin crypt if you ever heard of that i i got to see that in person and no i haven't dude it's this crypt in a in a church that no one knows who did this but they basically took the bodies of dozens and dozens of monks and took their their 
bones and decorated like three or four small chapels with the bones of these dead priests. No shit. It is truly grotesque to look at. You you can't look away. And they were just shipping all these bodies to this monastery, and some dude just decided to play with them. And like, Where is this? This is in Rome. Oh, okay. Yeah. So That's badass. It, it right. is really badass, and it's definitely worth seeing. But that's what's kind of going on here with this this like church of corpses down there with this guy. God. Well, no, I mean it is freaky. It is freaky. Uh, I will say some of the corpses, the the people that had the the ring on from the story from the seventies and the sewed back on head. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, they looked okay, but they definitely looked plasticky or or fake <laughs> but like in a good way or a bad way right because if it's like all formaldehyde and preserved like it does kind of have that that's true to it, you know and uh dairy has the same look later in the movie so maybe it's intentional uh, <laughs> yeah it definitely could have been intentional <clears throat> oh God. it wasn't let's put it this way if it was bad it wasn't bad enough to take me out of it by itself <clears throat> no i just thought it for like two seconds then i was like all right yeah. you know let's move on yeah. but uh anyways yeah Fun little fact, too. Gina learned how to drive a stick shift just for this movie, which I can completely tell because I, mean, I know it's part of the story, but all she fucking does is grind those gears, man. It's like she super grinds those gears. <laughs> I'm like, is this is this mess? Is this like really seriously? She can't. She's grinding like when that fake the, the truck comes by and she thinks it's the creeper, but it's not. She just grinds them for like 30 seconds straight. She can't find a gear to save her it's life. so depressing. You're watching just like, oh, my God. <laughs> but while we're picking on her, let's point out she's one of the better horror movie survivors because not only does she use the car to run over the creeper, yeah. she fakes him out and you know, grinding the gear so he thinks that she's not going to go and then she goes. And she reverses over him. That's true. Yeah. And I applaud, you know, I applaud. I, yeah, I do too. She actually go, goes at him like three times and then, yeah. then Derry has her stop, which I'm like, no, don't stop. And and you see the wing pop out too, but she does hit him one more time after that. So. She does. She does. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. No, that's, that is a good, it, it's good on her. She's a, a smart character. <laughs> um, the phone conversation with the psychic, I guess had to be rewritten due to some storytelling issues. They wanted her to give more exposition, I believe, but they had already filmed Justin Long's dialogue, so they had to still make it match with that. So, they, but they did that. They did it all right. Um, they did. They did. Yeah. And then I didn't notice this, but in that scene, the Jeepers Creepers album that mm. you see sort of in the background is Victor Salva's high school yearbook picture doctored up to look older. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> so I thought that was interesting. Um, I guess the shot between the trooper car and Trish and Derry's car where they're following each other um, was one of the, the hardest shots to get. Uh, once oh, again, it's one of my favorite sequences in the yeah. whole movie. They, they finally have police and now this thing has wings and like they thought they were safe, but they're not. They made smart decisions. They pulled over at this diner. They called the police. They've got, and they're just fucked though. The creeper is just a badass. You know? Yeah, there were multiple. There was two or three times. This being one of them in the movie, where I'm like, "Oh, they're they're like they're okay now. What's what what could happen now to them? Like they're okay, you know." Yeah. The first time yeah. they got exactly. away and they go to the exactly. diner, I'm like, yeah. "Oh, they made it! Like they, they made they got, it. Exactly. They got away." Uh, yeah. Yeah, then, of course, they don't. And then, yeah, the second time being, oh, they're at the police station. They got the cops. The cops are going back. They're good yeah. to go. And and that's not the case, obviously. And, at yeah, all. I mean, and that's what's brilliant about this ending is it's actually Terminator 2 ending where, like, the, the police station gets besieged. And, and it's – you think you're safe. You're surrounded by the police. You're in a safe building. And this thing just tears right through it. Yeah, all. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, uh, but yeah, hard shot to get. They, their car was on a trailer thing again. The cops' cars weren't, mm-hmm. and they had marks to hit, and it just it just took forever. Um, yeah, so I, we already mentioned it. Salva, he wanted a real live creature. The only CGI were wings and, and carrying him across the moon, so everything was was practical effects. Uh, this, this cat sequence, there were 30 cats on the enclosed oh porch. <laughs> well, that's the part lady. they should have CGI'd. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that was hard to film too. One of the cats did not like the actress, uh, but she eventually found a favorite and was able to 
hold on to it. <laughs> <laughs> but 30 different cats they had in there. That's just crazy. No way. No way. <laughs> Screw that. Uh, Jonathan Breck, who played the Creeper, I guess, for his audition, he did that sort of the sniff test. They oh, call that it. like... Yeah. Yeah. That's really cool. Salvo remembers being scared by his performance in the audition room. Uh, mm. Jonathan Breck also had his head shaved for the audition just because he felt that's what the character would look like. Man, talk about dedication. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. But, they say um, dress for the job you want. So he shaved his head. Yeah. Like, you know, he did it. <laughs> um, and Salvo, he was told by other well-known horror directors and the studio to put to put more of a backstory and include uh, some lines for the creeper. But he sort of held out, went against their advice because he felt the creeper is more effective, uh, like the more mysterious that he is, which I agree with. But we got some backstory, but uh, uh, it'd be nice to maybe... Do, do the sequels explore that? Do you, like, I know we talked about how I am not familiar with the sequels, but do the sequels explore like the backstory of the creeper at all? So good question. A little bit more than this does, but not to a satisfying extent. Okay. And okay. and there is a Jeepers Creepers comic book that gets very detailed about it. Now, I have not read it. I don't know the whole lore. I sort of liked the mystery of guessing. But yeah. my understanding is that, according to the comic book, this thing is some kind of, like, pagan deity or something like really? that. Really? Okay. Yeah, but in the movies, you know, as quick quick overview of the movies – the um, the second one um, takes place, I, I think, basically immediately after or the next day. And remember, the creature only comes out every 27 years. And this yeah. time it's um, attacks basically a busload of kids. That gets the- OK. And I actually think this episode's coming at a good time because I just saw a meme that we're in like year 23 now from the release of this movie. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yep, I think you're, I think you're right. So it's, it's coming up soon that we're going to deal with the creature. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, so so the second one has that, and the second one was originally supposed to be about, um, you know, G- Giselle's character as well as um, Trisha's character. Okay. Uh, and th- this this group of students being hunted in this in this you know bus school bus yeah. that was going to be a B plot. But they ended up saying, you know, actually, this is like way more interesting. And we're just dividing our attention. The second one has Ray Wise in it, which I love. Mm. Um, and he actually has like the tools to fight back a little bit. They harpoon this thing. They hang him up in a barn and wait for him to wake up again. It's like, oh, oh. shit. Okay. So, so it's pretty good. The third one is a prequel to the second one, but a direct sequel to the first one. And okay. the third one, basically, it's right after the police get, you know, fucked to the pieces by this thing they're like oh we need uh we need to go like posse up and track this thing down so it's okay like immediately after a posse people's like let's go get it and it ends with the school bus from the the second one taking off now the the third one is so fucking frustrating is to answer your question does it get into the lore of the creature and the short answer is yes there's this like vase or something that's important to it and it sort of tells a story of of what the creature is they don't get into it enough in the movie at almost mm-hmm. at all. And one of the characters at the end of the movie, like tells the creature like, Oh, I know your secret. And the creature like screams and howls, you know, mm-hmm. and we are given no hints beyond that. Ah, so, so you're, you're, you're like wanting that fourth one then, right? Is what you're right, saying. It, exactly. And they hint that like, there was something in this vase. That's the key to defeating it. And you're like, Oh, cool. Like the showdown's coming. Uh, it is not. It's not <laughs> happening. You're not going to get your fourth movie. We have no idea what this creature's weakness no. was. You know. And they didn't. I mean, are you familiar with Reborn at all? Because that was like the. Re- is that just like a remake? I mean, no, everyone hated it. I, it's I just straight. That. It's a straight reboot. And uh, I did my research on it. You know, enough to um, talk about it on the episode. So, so it's produced by our friends at Orvo Studios. Yes, we know the production company. I personally know the director of the uh, of the film. Yeah, which yeah. I guess is he's a cool guy and has made other movies, but yeah, I haven't heard anything good about this one. Yeah, this one I, I haven't, and and this one kind of gets wrong everything that this one got right. It's about a mar- like a young married couple or wow. an engaged couple, and so it's you know the more traditional 
romantic dynamic, which is not, you know, it's, it's not bad. There's a reason Hollywood does it. It's because love is a very strong motivator that people identify with. So sure. it, it sure. works for characters. But I just like the brother and sister thing because you don't get that as often. And that's a different kind of love and also worth, you know, exploring. But this, yeah. this reboot dispenses with that. The main character is pregnant and, and she's like just found out and like the creepers after them. I think a lot of it takes place at a carnival mm-hmm. and there's like a cult that worships the creeper and, and basically brings people to his like abandoned house. to feed Okay. The okay. Um, and the creeper believes that if he eats the baby, it will live forever for reasons. Uh, um, okay. Okay. So yeah, um, interesting. Know, interesting. Shot. Yeah. It gets, it gets beat to hell and, and they, they win actually. They live. Um, you know, who's you gonna watch? Are you gonna watch it? No, not even. <laughs> I'm falling asleep just thinking about it. <laughs> you know, um, I, I don't, I, I'm glad I know what it's about so I can think about it intelligently. Yeah, uh, yeah. but it's just so frustrating for this this series. By the way, the third one is not good. I like Cre- Jeepers Creepers too, mm. but Jeepers Creepers 3 sucks in part because it's all to set up a fourth movie. Mm. So it doesn't really stand on its own. And then you don't get the fourth movie. So all you're left with is blue balls. Yeah. And then you you get stuck with this reboot. So it's like you've got blue balls, and then you have to settle for this, like, dry hand job to get you on. <laughs> and it is nothing but disappointing. No, no. All right. My filter's gone, by the way. At this oh, that's good. That's what. That's the Carmelo we want to see. <laughs> <laughs> Who's had enough uh, Scott, who had enough whiskey in him, you know. <laughs> right. It's, it's, exactly. Um you yeah. know, but th- this movie, this like I said, the second one's good. I'm glad we can talk about the sequels because we won't cover them specifically. Yeah, but you um, never know. Maybe someday. Maybe maybe we'll. Yeah, maybe up. you know. Yeah. And I like I love theorizing about the creeper. Like you know, fans. Once in a while, we get comments that people like talking about this shit. So comment and tell us what do you think this thing is? Where did it come from? Is it a demon? Is it like a deity? Is it a one of a kind creature? Um, you know, is how- it an alien? Is it is it an alien? It's are there more? Alien. Yeah, you're right. It's, yeah, are there more of them? You know, is a good question. Is uh, this a is are they the the creatures from uh, uh, Starship Troopers? Is this you know? Interesting. Very interesting question. <laughs> the uh, I love the by the way, I love the mandible thing. It's very predator when you said that yeah. they're aliens. I'm like, oh, maybe um, the um, the comic book suggests that the creeper has been alive for like five thousand years. Right? Oh, okay. That it's like ancient, ancient. And I also would love to hear the fans' opinion. You know, does the comic count? Like, when does the mm-hmm. comic book become canon? Is it canon? Was the comic after the movie or before? It's after. After, right? right? Okay. Yeah. Yes. The, yeah. The movie's not based on a comic book. The comic okay. book was okay. inspired by the movie. You know, but let us know because I'm curious. You know, is it when the rights holder says it counts or will it never count? You know? Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. I still know what the creepers like weakness was that they were hinting at. Oh yeah. The third one brings um, uh, Trish back at the end of the mm-hmm. movie. Remember I told you part three is a prequel to two. That's right. So it takes place between one and two. It, it Then it jumps 27 years and Trish is like waiting and ready to go after it. You know? Oh, so she's like Linda Hamilton now. Just- Basically. Yeah. Except, you know, much yeah. much younger or uh, jamie lee curtis but less leathery will significantly <laughs> <laughs> she's like well-conditioned leather um, yeah i will i will add i know i already complimented this actress's attractiveness once uh for whatever age she is now 50 something she's yeah. smoking hot she's ah, smoking all right hot. all right she's kept it going okay yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> much like myself as you know i'm 63 of and, course. Uh, I keep of it. course. I don't know why you hang out with us youngins. <laughs> <laughs> Keeps me young. Yeah, yeah. So, well, yeah, I mean, that's all the notes pretty much. So a little bit about the reception, Jeepers Creepers. It premiered at the the München Fantasy Film Fest in Germany. It also debuted at uh, Fantasia International Film Festival in Canada in July of 2001. Uh, the theatrical release in the United States was by United Artists and Metro Goldwyn Mayer on August 31st, 2001, and it opened to nearly 3,000 theaters and stayed in release for 126 days. So That's, that's wild, because these days movies don't stay in theaters for like two weeks. No, no, and this this is where I had the stat about how it it, uh, it grossed $37.9 million in the U.S. It made $15.8 million in its first four days and ranked first 
Uh, it broke the record for highest Labor Day opening weekend, as I said, previously held by City of Angels. Um, so, yeah, it was crazy. The critics had some good things to say about it. There was some some mixed reviews. Um, you know, New York Stephen Holden from New York Times says that once the Creeper was revealed, the film surrenders its imagination and formulaic plot filler, and two formulaic plot filler. Um, but, yeah, another L.A. Times critic had only positive feedback saying, scariest opening sequence of any horror picture in recent memory, uh, And which I... I don't know if it was, I guess, is he talking about the truck just patronizing them? I don't know the opening sequence that, I guess that's the opening I think sequence. it's that whole, like, yeah, I mean, the, the truck, like, trying to run them off the road because yeah. it is really scary. It's very realistic. It's, it's, you know, again, if you've ever been the victim of, like, road rage, like, you know how terrifying it is when you realize, like, oh, I could yeah. die doing this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, recently on, on what is known as one of the more dangerous uh, freeways in the country, the Dan Ryan. I was driving, this is a little while ago, I was driving home and someone, you know, cut me off and I honked at him because, you know, fuck you. Yeah. And then, and I'm talking about like on the interstate with, you know, 70 miles an hour, cars everywhere. He starts brake checking me, like coming to <laughs> almost a complete stop. Jeez. And it was scary because yeah. I'm like, I could hit this guy, you know, if I, you know, and I tried to get around him and he kept swerving to stay in front of me. And Jeez. Stuff. Yeah, when you realize that, like, some lunatic is so mad that you honked at him that he's willing to get into an accident and risk hurting or killing you. Yeah. It's really scary. And so that's what this whole movie starts with a very normal scare, which is the yeah. car gaining on them in the window behind them, and they don't see it until it's too late, and now they're they're stuck, and he's running them off the road. That's why I thought this movie is so brilliant, because if, if this was just a road rage movie then, where this guy's like, like hounds them for an hour and a half in real time. That mm-hmm. would have been scary. And yeah. if it was a serial killer movie and they just like have to make it to the next town to get to the police. And it's like a long drive and there's no cell service and they were pursued by a serial killer. That would be scary too. Yeah. Yeah. This movie keeps ratcheting it up and then like it does. with the creature and now the creature can fly and then the creature <laughs> can't die. And it's like, Holy shit. They, yeah. That's when you realize they were fucked from the beginning. Yeah, yeah. I do like how it keeps upping the shock factor. Uh, yeah. So still, definitely still a favorite. So Also uh, really foreshadowing. There's, yeah. there's a lot of nice subtle foreshadowing about Derry's eyes. And um, the movie does play with this fake out of like which of them is the creeper after. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But I don't think there's any question it's Derry the whole time. And that psychic can't look at him without crying. And the um, creeper goes into his car and smells his dirty laundry, which they yeah. were talking about. So it's like, I think it's pretty clear he wants dairy. From yeah. He's, he's smelling his underwear since the beginning. You know? Yeah. Yeah, so, that, you know. yeah. But it's, yeah, it's a good one. So. I think this movie got fucked on Rotten Tomatoes. It's got a score of 45%. Like, I don't think that's high enough. Yeah. And uh, the IMDb wasn't too bad. I think it was like six point something. So Most it wasn't, well, it wasn't too bad, but. No, overall, I, I like it. It was I had fun revisiting it. I was entertained, uh, but just a little tired. <laughs> I yeah. think that's why I was falling asleep a little bit. But yeah, and you know what? I, I hear you because sometimes you know you watch it late enough, and you got kids, and you got to start to yeah. really late, and, and it gets tiring. I will say, I think the movie's really excellently paced. It's not that long, and it does escalate in the way we we've mentioned. And, yeah, um, it's not long enough to drag, so. By the time you like get to the police station, I mean, like that's the last, I don't know, 10 or 15 minutes in the movie. Like, yeah, yeah. You're all in. And uh, um, I think it's, uh, I just think it's really well made. Yeah. Yeah. Well, cool. I think that wraps us up for uh, Jeepers Creepers. Um, quick, quickly, I believe in our next episode in a couple of weeks, we will be covering a, another universal monster movie. I, we haven't decided exactly which one yet. Yeah. But, uh, you know, we, we're slowly making our way through those here and there. So we'll, we'll be covering one of those. Tune in to find out which one it is. That's right. And if you have a request, let us know. We might, have, yeah. we might not have picked it yet. Or yeah. we did. Yeah, yeah. Let us know if you have a monster movie, Universal Monster Movie request. That and we have Rob inevitably bitches about the Universal Monster Movie. He will, but we'll get to one of his picks later after yeah. that. We'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, quickly, though, 
what did you watch? You watch anything interesting lately? Oh yeah. Um, let's see. What did you watch? I um. I'm also scrambling to think. Of I've things. been uh, watching Fall of the House of Usher on Netflix. Oh yeah, I've been meaning to uh, check that out. I haven't watched it yet. It is fucking awesome. Is it? <laughs> it is my. It has become my favorite Mike Flanagan piece. Really? Yeah, and I love Doctor Sleep, but this this is. I, I enjoyed. Uh, Bly Manor and I enjoyed Hill House, but they are slow compared to Usher. Usher really breakneck. And if you like Edgar Allan Poe, there are just so many references to it. It'll it it tickles your your balls the whole time with those references. Okay, great cast. Um, it, you know some of his most of his usuals, but some some new faces like Bruce Greenwood, who's great. Um, and if you know the Poe stories. You like you kind of know what's going to happen, so mm-hmm. there's the, the there's that. But he finds creative ways to do those stories. So like, you know, in the Mask of the Red Death, you know, there's a party and there's seven rooms in a line and they're all a different color. But in this, it's a it's a club scene. So the flashing lights of the club create the monochrome colors of the different rooms flashing over and over again. Mm-hmm. And so it's stuff like that, um, and. Uh, I, I love it. It's great. So I need to uh, maybe re-familiarize myself with uh, Poe before we. Yeah, <laughs> before... I, I think you'd enjoy it. Just like it works just fine as it is. But I think if you know your Poe, I think it's it's a huge like people pleaser for you. It's like what's the word? I'm a fan service. It's like, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, so that and uh, and that's really. I saw the movie Fall Guy. That was yeah. You know, that was fun. It was good. Yeah. yeah. It was good. I mean, it wasn't great, but it was fun. Um, okay. Okay. You know, definitely, definitely not. Um, you're not going to watch it and be like, oh, it sucked. You'll be like, oh, yeah, it was good. Yeah. With, with a couple of really standout moments in there. Um, I'll have to check it out. Yeah. yeah. And then I saw um, If, the uh, imaginary friend movie. Yeah. How was that? Uh, that was a lot slower than I thought it was going to be. Uh, okay. like, cr- That's cr- the Krasinski one, right? It is. John- okay. That's it is. Which, to his credit, he made a much like sweeter film you okay know, it's a sweet yeah. family film but it's um more contemplative than i thought it was going to be mm. you watch the trailer and you're like oh there's like a dozen like cgi characters running around i kind of thought it was going to be like monsters inc yeah um, but it's really not like that at all and it takes a long time to get that going so there's a lot more like about this girl whose mom died and she's like trying to get over it and Ooh. now her dad's in the hospital and she's kind of re reliving that like pain of losing a parent and i'm like I did not get that from the trailer at all. No. <laughs> so, so be warned if you bring your kids, they, they may find the first, you know, 10 or 15 minutes a little hard to get through. A little bit. Okay. Okay. And, you know, depending on their age, like, uh, like Elliot and Stella are too young to. Say yeah. They won't, they won't know what the hell's going on. Right. Like, what the hell's this? Okay. Yeah, yeah. But like a nine, 10 year old might start to like appreciate. Okay. It. Okay. All right. What about you? What do you got? I've been, uh, I've been I, I watched, um, that HBO series Chernobyl. Oh. Finally, I'd never watched it before, and Rob kept recommending it to me, and it was amazing. It was fucking awesome. It has. Oh man, I gotta see that. Yeah. It just it's just a dramatization of the events at Chernobyl, which you know I wasn't super like I knew about it, but I wasn't super familiar with all the details. And sure. and I looked up as I was watching it some of the things, and and there are embellished characters to represent like swaths of people to okay. have their voices heard and. And so there's some dramatization, but a lot of the the facts are there. And it was very interesting to learn about that through the awesome performances of like Jared Harris and uh, Stellan Skarsgård and, oh and God, these people. Yeah. I, I so go, don't tell Rob I said it. His taste in television is excellent. I know, right? That his movies is just fucking horrible sometimes. It's terrible. It's terrible. <laughs> yeah. But he's recommended documentaries and stuff to me. And it's like all good stuff. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I, I watched that. Just, I think it's only five hour long episodes, so it's not not too much of a commitment. Shannon and I watched it, and then um, I did watch a little uh, just random off the cuff horror movie called The Devil Below uh, that was made in twenty twenty one. I was just looking it up. The only really recognizable person in it is Will Patton, and it's just about some. I like him. Yeah, it's just about like this tragedy that happened at a, a mine years ago, and now these adventurers are going up for more answers, and and it's sort of a like a, a played out scenario they, they go up and it turns out there's like creatures in this mine and okay. you know 
but it's not bad. It's pretty good. Yeah, it's um, good. It wasn't too bad. And then um, I think the only other thing I've started watching, Shannon and I were watching just alone that, that survival show, which tons of people have watched. I just never really watched it. We were like, yeah, check oh, it out. Cool. So we've watched a few episodes of that. But, yeah. So that's about it so far for me. Um, but yeah, exciting there. Uh, so yeah, I guess, I guess that wraps us up. I want to start reminding people to do this at the end of our episodes. Um, definitely uh, leave us a review if you can on Apple podcasts. Please. We just have, those have gone by the wayside. Now I'm like, yeah, we just try and get some more reviews again. So yeah. leave us some reviews there. Um, also, you know, just follow us, tag us, whatever at cult classic horror on everything. We want to give away free shit again. I haven't paid attention enough in the last few weeks, but I also haven't been seeing a lot of activity in the last few weeks. So just in general, if you, if you like share a meme in the group, or if you tag us, uh, share the post and tag us, share our episodes and tag us, um, you know, we'll, we'll sort of mentally enter you into, to be the horror freak of the week. Um, and we'll give a, give you a t-shirt, give you one of like this, the special edition of one of these movies on Blu-ray, um, there's another option. I sent Freddie a canvas a few weeks back. Um, nice. so yeah, just, just do that. And, and we will announce those again. I've been a little out of touch over the last couple of weeks where our band was out on the road. Uh, the, yeah, how'd the tour go? it was good. Shameless plug. If you haven't listened to this podcast long enough to know that, uh, that Scotty and I are in a, deathcore band called poolside at the flamingo we just released a new ep check it out if you guys are into that type of music we just did a little run down into texas and through arkansas and back home and it was a good time so check us out poolside at the flamingo on all streaming platforms but fantastic fantastic yeah. we, should, we need to do a metal episode where you explain the different types of metal I want yeah to. it's i and i'll get them wrong for according to whoever you're talking to you know what i mean it's just yeah yeah you just, exactly. you just never know so uh also if you leave us reviews we'll consider you for horror freak of the week as well if you leave us yes reviews. leave us good reviews and and we'll give, send you some free shit like yeah, t-shirts and exactly. whatnot so and and shameless plug we we haven't decided exactly how to do this yet but uh and by how i mean like when but we're going to announce our next movie very soon because we yes the release date and so now we're going to talk about when to release the trailers and stuff so uh that's coming up so yes it is being delivered to the distributor uh as we speak and we need to finalize some of these dates but yeah it's this found footage movie we made a long time ago we've talked about it plenty but finally you guys can see it and we're, we're pretty proud of it and we had a fun time making it and it's a, it's a pretty good film i think so. I think so. I think so too. I'm I'm very I'm very pleased with it. There's a lot of interesting stuff in there. So we won't tell you more yes yet, but yeah. an announcement is is coming. So um, stay tuned. Yes. All right, guys. Well, thanks for joining us. We'll catch you next time. Later. Don't you blame the movies? Movies don't create psychos. Movies make psychos more creative. <laughs>